What I'd like to say most about Javelin is the fact that uh, for the Territorial Defense Force in particular, which is not going to be necessarily a professional force, but a um, weekend, uh, you know, kind of force where uh, the individuals will only be training, say, periodically, is that Javelin is probably one of the easiest weapons uh, in terms of an anti-tank weapon out there to use. It employs fire and forget technology, which means that the gunner need only be trained up until the point of trigger pull, which means that it's very, very simple to train. In fact, all a gunner really needs in, to be order to, in order to be certified and become proficient with Javelin is, is roughly five days of training. Um, the training can be distributed, so it can be undertaken in a lot of different areas, so it'd be close to where the, uh, the soldiers are going to be stationed, if you will. The training is all done via simulation in kind of a classroom setting, and the gunners are all certified basically through this uh, simulation training uh, that's conducted. Uh, like I said, five days of classroom training and the gunners are ready to go out into the field and, and deploy the system you know, with, uh, with great, uh, uh, great capability. I, I think something that's, that's somewhat new and that may not have uh, had quite a lot of coverage yet in the press is the fact that uh, Javelin is being mounted up on vehicles. Uh, the U.S. Army has a program to mount and integrate Javelin on its striker vehicle, which is an 8x8 uh, platform. Those platforms are currently in Germany going through uh, initial operational test and evaluation. And at some point, uh, I understand they're due to come here to Poland for some additional testing. So uh, this is a capability that's been out there for quite some time, but it's just now uh, basically getting into the U.S. Army inventory, so we're very excited about that. Uh, and it will add a great added capability to address the, the threat set that I think is the most important to pull. Javelin is going to remain, it is today and will remain, the mainstay brigade combat team weapon for the U.S. Army, Marine Corps, and Special Forces and is planned to remain in service until at least the year 2050. So it's been upgraded over time since its inception to deal with emerging threats. And since it's going to remain in inventory for that additional length of time, uh, Javelin will continue to be upgraded so that it remains viable against uh, the emerging threat. The next modification is actually being studied right now. Uh, there are a number of propositions that are being put forward based on what the you know, the potential emerging threat is, whether there are any capability gaps that uh, maybe need to be addressed. But once those are identified, then I think, you, you know, there will be some R&D that will take place, and uh, it's very likely that there will be some future upgrades to the Javelin weapons. Another thing about Javelin is, is that it is in use by U.S. forces here in Poland, so there is a pretty significant interoperability benefit associated with that. It's also in use by a number of other NATO countries and other countries here in the region. So the ability to make use of that interoperability to enhance operations, logistics, et cetera, is present here uh, with JAM. So for Poland, our objective in providing a diverse array of missiles for Poland to create diversification for Poland, our objective is to provide a missile that we can get to them soon, uh, provide a quantity of missiles beyond that point because they'll need some missiles initially to test. At that point, we'll go in quantity, and then beyond that, we'll provide them, if they request it, the more advanced version of the missile. So what we see in providing Poland is three different answers, something that they can get quick, on some of the vehicles that they need and some of the missions that they need, provide them the opportunity to have a larger portion of missiles in production, and then also to look at the best means to have the most advanced missile, which is going to be ready soon as well. Worldwide confidence in Hellfire now, because of its operational use for all of US forces and all of our partner nations, 26 different nations around the world, is in such high demand that our production numbers have gone up dramatically. 
and we're being asked to produce over 11,000 per year. Those numbers are going to be an advantage if Poland makes a decision soon, within the next couple of years, they'll be able to take advantage of those lower costs for those missiles because they'll be able to join in with U.S. and NATO forces. The applications for Hellfire are even broader now. Because of the capabilities of our Longbow Radar Guided Missile, our Laser Guided Hellfire Romeo Missile, and the combination of the two with our new JAGAM Missile, the number of platforms and the number of missions has just increased. U.S. forces are doing an evaluation right now for short-range air defense, and that has to do certainly with counter UAS and a number of other slower movers uh, that create problems for the troops as well as shipborne, vertically launched against fast attack craft and fast inshore attack craft. And of course, the bread and butter of Hellfire is to defeat a certain neighbor's heavy armor and heavy tanks. That is where our specialty is. Certainly Hellfire's capabilities, its requirements of what it does for the U.S. Army, for our partner nation, it exceeds all of the requirements that are needed for an anti-tank guided missile. Uh, for this class of weapon, uh, it certainly goes at eight kilometers and beyond. The warhead itself is a multi-purpose warhead that the operator can choose how he wants that warhead to explode and to defeat the target, which is a great option for the pilot and, and the aircraft. So the options are certainly anti-tank point detonation. You can have it explode and, and defeat uh, personnel in the open. You can have it penetrate a type of a building or a cave or a bunker or a structure and tell that missile when to explode once it penetrates that building because the enemy certainly can be on the other side of the building or it can be right at the entrance to a bunker and you want to be able to determine which one you want to defeat. So our objective and I hope through our years of conversation here with Poland is to create an opportunity to have vehicles or helicopters that have multi-mission capability. Which, which means having the same launching system that you can fire a couple of different missiles, the, the more advanced missile certainly when it comes, and the missile that's in production now, and having two different guidance sections on there allows the operator to say, well, if the weather goes bad, or if there is a problem on the battlefield, he can fire the one that certainly has the radar guidance. Otherwise, he can use the laser guided and have a very precision strike. 